Buenos dias. Mi nombre es Teresa Saldivar, and I am a teacher here in Corpus Christi, Texas, currently at the Art Museum of South Texas. I love working there at the museum because I'm able to do um, what I enjoy most, teach dance and drama, and also support the arts. And so at the Art Museum of South Texas, we've been able to promote and encourage our Mexican-American cultural culture this past year by collaborating with Miss Diana Lopez's book, Selena, Sing With Me, and sharing it in the schools, encouraging kids to find their gifts and sharing them with the world. I love Sing With Me because it encourages kids to find their gift, such as Encanto, the new story that's Colombian, but Encoco, which is Mexican-American. And so I just love this time right now because I can see we're going through a cultural change. Now at the Art Museum of South Texas, we have an illustrator, also author of You Matter. And this young man is encouraging kids to, to know more about their culture. And he has a very special quote. And I'm going to share a little bit of that quote today. Children need to see themselves in books. They need to see their gender. They need to see their color, their hair texture. They need to see their their culture, their disability themselves. Picture books are like many children's first introduction to the world. Seeing yourself is almost necessary. It's a necessary message. You matter, you are visible, and you are valuable. This is Christian Robinson. Please come by and check out his work. And so today I'm going to share with you what I love doing most. I love performing in different events here in the city as well out in the surrounding areas. I share messages um, in honor of Cinco de Mayo. Uh, I'm a participant of different fiestas involved in different uh, mariachi events. Um, I encourage girls to try folklorico dancing and teen dance and we participate in events such as El Dia de los Muertos. Um, of course, our, I will show you a lot of the different dresses with their beautiful colors here in a few minutes. Um, most recently, we were invited to be the team dance participants of Dia de los Muertos. We celebrated there in the Ritz Theater, the only team in Corpus Christi to be invited, and I had a very small group, and the girls represented the state of Veracruz, and I will show you their costume um, when we get to the costume section. And so just the Animals Martha's celebrations here in Corpus Christi, Texas has gotten really big. And I think it's really important for us to remember our loved ones by having these altars and also just celebrating their lives. And um, in this time, we're, um, we're faced with many different adversity uh, challenges. I, I feel that uh, the other Los Muertos is helping us um, process our loss and also celebrate life. Now with this, I will lead you into the costume section, and this is carving the mariachi. And I feel that I have to speak about the mariachi because it is the soul of Mexico. It's uh, el alma de Mexico. And I feel that here in South Texas, we see a lot of mariachis everywhere. And I feel that um, they're coming out in fuller force because of stories such as Coco and also just our cultural embrace has just become stronger than ever. And so I definitely have to share with you carving the mariachi. And I will show you pictures of an artist, um, Bayo Rebora, and just kind of share with you a little bit of his artwork. And how he creates the mariachi in form of wood. And so he's crafting there the mariachi. There he does the little face. Making a little. Until he finally finishes with the mariachi. 
Even at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, they recently had the Mariachi Festival, which I think is really neat to see. Um, also, having gone to Texas A&M Corpus Christi, I feel that it's important that we support events like this, but also maybe participate, become a mariachi too, or maybe try a folklorico dance. And so, I want to share with you my costumes, if that's okay. This is my first costume. And actually it's um, a mariachi, what is what a mariachi might wear. Now there are many different, different ones that look like this, maybe more ornate or maybe pants, but this is the one I've had and I was able to perform with it um, a song, Cancion del Mariachi, that was featured in the movie Desperado. And I think that song is really fun. So if you haven't heard it, I definitely encourage you to hear it because it talks about um, the, the girl that has Pia Morena and she's a dark skinned girl and she's um, dancing and just sharing her, her culture. And so the mariachi, La Alma de Mexico. Then we go into a Jalisco dress. And this is the shirt, or the top, and this is the skirt. The skirt is very heavy. It is. <laughs> it looks very ornate with all different colors, and it's very beautiful. And as you see, it's um, just a very Represent, re representing of Mexico, the mariachis always play at Sol de la Negra or El Jarabe Tapatio or maybe even Pelea de los Gallos and you can see girls donning this dress dancing to these beautiful songs. And all of these songs are very passionate and so the girls have to be very skilled in wearing them because um, of course they have their unique footsteps but also the dress, because of its length and size, the girl has to have uh, an expertise in their steps and um, even being able to move through this, this type of a skirt. And so whenever I wear this skirt, I think I'm like a, maybe a tornado or a storm, and I feel like the storm is coming at me, but um, I'm able to get through the dance. And I think it's also even representative of just a lot of ups and downs in life and how we have to maneuver through them. And then we finish, and then it's ta -tan, that, that final step that you'll get to see me do in a few minutes. And so this is from the state of Jalisco. School. <clears throat> Next we have the state of Chiapas. Very colorful, very beautiful, very ornate. I say the, the dance that my girls always perform in, in this type of a dress, or even myself, is Chapa Nekas. Chapa Nekas has a lot of claps, and I think everyone loves Chapa Nekas because um, it's a very light skirt, and all, um, all of this is just, I think, just pure joy. The colors, the clapping, the sounding of, of the marimba. It sounds like a little marimba. It's very um, pretty and light and, and just, it's very heartfelt when the dancers perform this. And so, as you can see, um, the beautiful flowers of the state of Chiapas. And so, and I have a little story, if I you don't mind me sharing, that this past year, um, I was invited to be a guest artist, artist with Texas Folklife in Austin, Texas. And so I was able to share a little bit of Chapanecas and do a demonstration for students in Austin ISD. So I'm very excited to share that and I will be able to share some of those steps with you today. Next we have the state of Oaxaca. And when I was younger, when I first moved back to Corpus Christi after living in Austin, Texas, I was able to go study with the Rotary of uh, Southside here in Corpus Christi, Texas to Veracruz. And so in Veracruz, we also ended up in Oaxaca. And so I just felt like I didn't know I would end up going to Oaxaca, but we went to a meeting and they had mole and they had amazing ladies wearing this headpiece that was made by my mom and this beautiful outfit. And I think this represents the strength of the Oaxacan woman 
the beauty. Um, she's almost seen like a flower, very strong. I think this headpiece represents just all the beauty that the women have, but also their strength. And so when they walk, they carry themselves really gracefully. Uh, you can see the intelligence of the Mexican-American woman when you see them wearing this in their actual state of Oaxaca. And so I've been able to dance with this costume here at Del Mar College. And um, I think the, the title was Rooted in Culture. And so because of my mom's foundation in San Luis Potosí, Mexico, um, I've been able to capture my roots in the form of dance. And so I want to share with you the last two, last two costumes. This is from the state of Veracruz. And in Veracruz, um, you do definitely see the red bow. So I'm gonna show you the little red bow. The red bow represents friendship, unity. Um, a lot of times you may see partners doing the dance of La Bamba, creating the bow, and then they lift the bow and they show it's a part of their um, union. And so I think it's really cool that they um, have this dance where they create this little bow. And so very pure and white. Uh, my girl, little girls performed um, at the Ritz Theater in their white dresses from Veracruz. We also did a, another little collaboration last year with Chicas Rock, where we had the girls performing alongside them. We had Miss Leslie from last year's uh, panel singing La Bamba with the Chicas Rock. And so that's really cool that through all of our Del Mar um, team collaborations, we've been able to expand out into the community. And so the girls represented their Mexican culture and representing Veracruz. Now this is my skirt. Well, it's actually my little girl skirt. I'm not gonna say it's my only my skirt, but I have had skirts like this before because it is a practice skirt. And so a practice skirt, it really is just for that, for practice. And so as you get more skilled in ballet folklorico, the skirts get bigger, the skirts get more colorful, then you start to branch out into these um, different states. And so right now I'm going to show you how to put the skirt on. We always have challenges in putting on these skirts because um, I think in, in the excitement of performing, um, the girls, of course, they, they have to learn, too, to put on their practice skirt. And so I'm going to show you here. You step in. This one's very small. Like I said, they're for a little girl. And I'm going to tie the two little strings from the back to the front. And here I remind the girls to pull up. Hopefully you're having fun in the merienda and learned a little bit more about the Mexican-American culture. I'm very excited to be back and I invite you today, right now in this merienda part of, of the event, I'd like for you to join me in dancing. And so if you are ready to move and maybe shake out those bones, as I say, um, shake it out, please join me. Stand up and I'm going to show you my shoes before I um, get dancing because of course I need them to dance and to show you. These are my red ballet folklorical shoes, and I say they came in the year of the red shoe. And so having seen Los Cafeteros at the university, the girls, they were wearing exactly what I was wearing. The red shoes and the red bows, they were wearing two, and so it was really neat to see them coming out from LA, performing here, and also just sharing their love of the Mexican-American culture. These are my shoes, and I'm going to switch them out. So these are my guarachas, you can see him here. And I'm going to take them off. And in, the, in my camps, I always kind of play with the kids and just because I know they look at me like, you're taking off your shoes. And so here they, they go, my red shoes. And so the red shoes has nails on the bottom. So you can hit and tap. You can find these red shoes at Mariachi Connection in San Antonio, Texas. They have everything you might need for dancing or even performing as a mariachi. And so I encourage you to check their website out. There we go. So today I will be doing first a very basic demonstration of La Botella. La Botella is the bottle. 
And so I am demonstrating this because it was a demonstration I did last year for Texas Folklife uh, for kids. And it's very simple. If you can find maybe a bottle in your house or in the kitchen, it could be like a water bottle or a maybe a, let's see, some other bottle. I know we have different bottles there around the house. And then just place it in front of you. And so this dance, of course, is very child friendly. It's almost like a game because the kids do a step that if they knock the bottle down and they drop it, um, they kind of get a little scared or excited because they, they are kind of left like a little bit unbalanced. So I think it's really cool to see kids performing this to see who is the last person standing with their bottle up. Sometimes they, they do have it up and sometimes of course they fall. So step number one, the step is just a basic turn. So we're turning on one, two, three, four. So turn one, two, three, four. Yes. Okay. And then you have a little step that goes to the front. This step comes from also el jarabe tapatio. It goes one, two, three, four, back two, three, four. One, two, three, four, back two, three, four. One, two, three, four, back two, three, four. And I always say you kind of follow your, your feet. And so when you're going in a curtsy, your head goes down. And when you're up, your head looks up. And I encourage my girls to really allow them to feel the dance and move with, with the steps. The next step is also featured in La Negra, maybe uh, Belea de los Gallos. It's a hard step, but it starts off, I say, the pony step. And so I always encourage kids to imagine they have a pony here and then just ride their pony. Yes. Right, like you can move it here, ride your pony, you can even lasso. kids put their hands behind their back. So it could be that they're doing this step, coming in, going back, and then doing the pony step. I challenge you today to maybe take it out. So it's a side sweep. This is a little bit of a harder step. It's step out, step out. It's like a little slide out. Say it's like kind of kicking out a little bit. So if you see that, it's almost like the horse is wanting to take off in the race. <laughs> So you kind of kick out a little bit, like that. And always remind yourself to smile. There are some dances in Ballet for Florico that are very fun and that beat, of course, we want to smile. There are some that are very serious and maybe have, you have a different look on your face. Let's see. Oh, this is the main step of La Bofea. I can't miss this one. And it's a step kick. You have to do a little 360 around the bottle, like this. And so you, the key is maybe not to look down because you wanna make sure you're up, always looking up. If you do happen to look down, just do it very quickly to make sure you haven't knocked your bottle over. And sometimes kids do, and that's okay. They have permission to pick it up and place it back up again. And that's the fun of the dance. And so sometimes even there's clapping, I encourage parents or grandparents to clap. So this is La Botella, and at the end, you can either hold it here, or you can pretend you're drinking maybe a uh, soda or so, okay, like that. Now another dance that I did was Chapanecas. Chapanecas comes from the state of Tapas, like I mentioned, has beautiful flowers. Um, it started off with very indigenous roots. They didn't have instruments, but they had their hands, and hands were used for clapping. And so this dance is loved by everybody. I say it's a keeper because whenever we perform it or whenever you see the performance of Chapanecas, the audience gets involved. And anytime the audience is a participant, people just, they love it. And so here we go with Chapanecas. Your skirt is out. Again, there's that one, two, three, four turn, and then you can come back. This step is step cross over and step cross over, step cross over and step cross over and one, two, three, four. Then you go to the other side, step cross over and step cross over 
and one, two, three, four. And you really have to hear that sound, one, two, three, four. Okay? Then we have what leads us to the clapping. So those of you at home, please feel free to clap. We'd love for you to join us today. One, two, three, four. Clap, clap. Clap, clap. Good. Then we have, let's see, we have a little step to the side. I say it's the queen or the princess that's moving. It's very soft and really you're just showing your skirt. You're showing, you're not really doing what you would do in La Neca or La Pelea where your skirt is really big like this. This one is really soft because you're showing the artwork done maybe by the indigenous who created the dress. And you're just showing the flowers because the dress itself is an artwork. And so you get to see the beautiful flowers. And then you take a bow. And that is Chapa Neca. It's a very simple dance. I believe it only has four steps. Thank you. And I hope you continue to enjoy this Mexican-American summer seminar. Stay cool and enjoy your summer. Que tengan un buen um, verano. Adios. Bienvenidos a la merienda. I'm very excited and honored to be dancing Chapanecas here at the new General Academic and Music Building above the beautiful Antofua Plaza. This is now Heritage Campus at Del Mar College. I will be dancing a little bit of Chapanecas, showing you the artwork of my skirt, Chapanecas. Thank <laughs> you. 